If you're out in the desert long enough, traveling around in your van or RV, sooner or later, you're gonna wind up with a puncture in your tire. And under the best of circumstances, taking it to a professional and have them remove the tire off of the rim and patch it on the inside is the best way to go. About 10 or $15 is the going rate. But if that's not an option for you, you can always plug it. And by plugging the hole in that tire, you should be good to go for the rest of the life of the tire if it's done properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. The first thing we wanna do is find where our hole is. And by using some soapy water, we can get some bubbles coming up right where the hole is. And I can see This thing doesn't have enough air in it. There it is. I can see that the hole's right here. So now that I know where the hole is, I'm gonna get my vulcanizing kit. Vulcanizing is a fancy word for plugging. And in your kit, you should have two T-handles. And I have one T-handle, so I'm gonna go get a second one. The first T-handle looks like this. It's kind of, kind of like a drill bit. So we find our hole and take this in here and we ream it. Just like this, I'm just gonna ream it and make it a bigger hole. I'm gonna go grab another T-handle for this. The idea is to rough this up. We want it to rough up quite a bit. After we've done that, we wanna put some rubber cement inside the hole. I'm just gonna put a little bit on this first. You can get rubber cement just about anywhere. You can get it at the big box stores, just about anywhere. This is Slime brand rubber cement. So I'm gonna get a lot, just slather that in there where it's everywhere around where the penetration took place. The next step is you get yourself one of these plugs and push it through the other T-handle that has a place for it. It's really sticky. Push it through so you have an even amount on both sides. And then we're gonna come back and do some more rubber cement. Got that, got that, got that. Now what we're gonna do, the trick is, we wanna put this in about 50%, where 50% of it's on the inside and 50% of it's on the outside. It's made in such a way that we can push it in and pull it out and leave it, so let's do that. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get over here where I've got a lot of leverage, so I want a lot of control. That about there is where we want it. I'm gonna pull it out fast. The slime will keep it held in place. That's exactly what it should look like. Now I'm gonna go grab something to cut the excess off with because we don't want this flopping around messing with our seal. Regular wire cutters, I'm gonna cut off the excess. So there we go, 40 PSI. Can you show this, does this pick up? While we're waiting, 235 by 75 R15 means 235 millimeters wide. 75% of the width is what you see as far as the uh, profile. And 15 denotes 15 inch rims. But you got temperature A, traction A, temperature B, and then you've also got like a max load rating. Anyway, where are we at, 30? Okay, so we're just about at 40 PSI on the pump. So I'm gonna take it off.
I'm unscrewing it first while it's still running so I don't lose a little bit of air in the process. Now I'm gonna check it. Even though this dial told me I was at 40 PSI, I'm still gonna check it just to cover my bases and see what the other instrument says and to see if they're the same. I'm liking it. It's coming up at about coming up at about 36 psi I'm liking that the highest on the range is 40 the important thing is I took a reading and it's 36 and so I'll go ahead and check this again tomorrow to see if it's around 36 now bear in mind right now it's late in the day and the Sun is on this tire and it's warm to the touch if I check my pressure in the morning when the Sun hasn't really come up and warmed everything up yet the tire pressure could be different because the, the temperature of the inside air in the tire is different. So you've got to factor that in if it's a pound or two, you know, it's not going to be that much, but it's nothing to freak out about if they're not exactly the same. So the last thing I'm going to do before we put this tire back on is I'm going to spray the area with a little soapy water and see if we get some bubbles and that'll tell us if we did a good job. So let's do that now. I am not seeing any bubbles. I'm not hearing any air escaping. So there you have it. We've gone ahead and for just a couple of dollars we've plugged this tire and it should be good for the life of the tire. This isn't a temporary fix. This is a permanent fix if you want it to be. I think in Dana's case, she has a warranty on this tire and she might just get it in and get it looked at, but at least we're back on the road and we're safe and sound. So don't be scared to plug your own tire. Right now, if you don't have a tire uh, repair kit, at the end of this video, go out and get yourself one. The one that we've got that we're using is a slime kit, slime brand. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them at any auto store, AutoZone, O'Reilly, Napa. They've all, they all carry these kits. They run about $30. But without this kit, you're not going to be able to fix your tire. And you're going to need to fix your tire when the tire says you need to fix it, not at, you know, according to our own schedules. So make sure you have that on hand, and you should be good to go. I hope this video helped you out a lot. And uh, you guys take care, and we'll see you on the next round. I don't know if you guys can see off camera, but I got a peanut calorie around me who told me to pump it up by hand. I want to show you guys, so, so somebody went and grabbed a hand pump, so that's what we'll do. We'll pump it up by hand. That's fine. I don't, I don't care. This takes a long time with a hand pump. This thing's not even moving. That's what I was thinking too. Okay, I'm almost done. Yeah, it's not even moving. Let's see if it's gonna if it'll work with the compressor. Society, you're crazy breed.